Hey, let's take a look at a must-own secret lens. There's not another video out there at all about this lens, and it's a crying shame. Last time I used this lens was probably 12 years ago. I've used it uh, three times, and uh, it wasn't my lens, so uh, I finally decided to get one because it is incredible, and I found a great deal on one. Now, while I've said that this is a must-own lens, um, obviously as soon as you see it, you're going to go, that's not a must-own lens. But, um, obviously, we're talking about a narrow spectrum of people here, and I'm going to say why it's a must-own lens, and I don't mean for everybody. Obviously, I mean for a narrow spectrum of people, and I'll get into the details of that. And uh, this is a lens you'll never hear talk about. Um, you'll, uh, I actually want to see if there's any press on this recently. I think the last time anybody talked about it was... Uh, Three years ago, amongst a small group of people, and I think there's like uh, 22 uh, Flickr members uh, for this lens, it's the Nikkor 400mm f3.5. Now, um, this is one stop less than the 2.8, obviously so, but at the time this one came out, which is 1977, um, this is an AI lens, by the way. It'll work on any current Nikon, except for obviously a dinky 3000 or 5000 series Nikon. Um, the uh, 400 millimeter current one, of course, is uh, what twelve thousand dollars, and it's 2.8. So you think this thing is huge? I mean, this is nothing compared to the 400 millimeter 2.8 to autofocus, and obviously, price-wise, we're talking about sub one thousand dollars on this versus, uh, uh, you know, twelve thousand, one thousand, twelve thousand dollars, one thousand dollars. So here it is, huge obnoxious beast that it is. Um, actually, a lot of people that have owned uh, uh, really nice, all of them, uh, Nikkor uh, uh, Telephoto Primes will actually say that this is one, if, one of, if not the best, uh, long uh, tele primes that Nikon ever made, period. I gotta love that the huge front lens cap is 122 millimeters. Um, you can see there, we have a built-in lens hood. Um, now, I use this, I'm going to tell you why this is a must-own, when I say must-own lens, you know, I mean that prospectively, obviously, as I've already stated. Um, why this is a must-own lens. For $1,000, what the hell you get out of this thing? And I'm going to show you another video here in, you know, in a few days with uh, my Nikon uh, 14B teleconverter, which is a 1.4 teleconverter. That turns this lens, now obviously you lose a stop of light, so you got a 3.5 lens here. It's going to turn it into a 4.5. Um, 400, uh, excuse me, uh, 560 millimeters, so, um, with the, uh, teleconverter, uh, 14B, which I don't want twice as much, I mean, I don't, you, you can turn this into an 800 millimeter, but, you know, obviously you're gonna have to, uh, hand-holding this thing, by the way, is just an, uh, an obnoxious beast, of course, even with this around your neck, and of course you would never, ever, ever, ever dream of having this hang off the front of any camera, I mean, it will just destroy it obviously and logically so but a must own lens what the hell are you getting for something that's uh at, at a thousand typically these go for between this one is in extremely good shape i'm glad i was able to find it uh, cheap um relatively speaking you got it right at a thousand dollars but it's in incredibly good shape but you can find these for between twelve hundred dollars and like at the lowest 950 really and uh and it's incredible. It's an EDIF, ED glass. It's uh, eight elements in uh, six groups. It's a hair over six pounds, too, of course. i put this on this wobbly table like that. That wouldn't be a very smart idea. Eight elements in six groups. Uh, you have 14 feet minimum focusing distance. A hair over six pounds. You have a drop-in 39 millimeter filter that goes right back here. Obviously buying a super huge, enormously expensive uh, filters for the front of this lens is just not an option and this is the drop-in bay for the 39 millimeter lens now you should always have a filter in here and this is just an air coated nikon filter this is the uh 37b right isn't that what it is yeah, yeah 37b uh filter um 39 millimeter drop-in so you could put um, infrared and uh um, ND filters in here. This is not one of the later ones that actually has a screw back here that lets you drop in a, uh, a polarizer. Uh, so you can actually adjust it here like one of the current ones. There's a screw here where you can actually turn it and adjust the uh, polarization as you want it. Obviously you would never want to leave this out and you would always want to have a lens and a filter in there because it actually affects uh, where it uh, stops at infinity. 
it'll actually change it even though that is a uh, flat optical glass it always needs to have a filter in there um, so with a 1.4 uh, was it a uh, my TC14B um, which I'll show you here in a day or so um, you know you got a 560 millimeter lens at f4.5 and that you know if you think f4.5 isn't fast and you know we're talking sub one thousand dollars here and you think this is huge take a look at how much a 500 millimeter costs like a 500 millimeter f4 or 500 millimeter f2.8 this is why i'm actually calling this a must own lens for many reasons and i'll, I'll go to the other ones here in a second um you know for a thousand dollars you get something that is relatively small is manageable you know still you know it's not manageable without a monopod um, you know for more than five minutes I mean it, th this lens will spank your ass I don't care how many muscles you've got this lens will spank your ass and uh, but the uh, internal focusing on this is just silky smooth I can actually uh, focus this with my pinky finger here there's no moving uh, external elements obviously so the secondary uh, set group uh, right here knows the uh, the tertiary group right here is uh, moved in and out for focusing so just just as smooth as uh, frog fur which is a southern saying by the way people say what the hell is frog fur well there's no such thing saying smooth as frog fur just incredibly smooth uh, to manually focus now the question is well it's not an autofocus lens well let's be realistic here for a thousand dollars what the hell can i not do with this lens that i could do with now by the way you know how huge the 400 millimeter f 2.8 is it is huge it's huge and twelve thousand dollars by the way you know you're not going to be able to be shooting rabid squirrels flitting around a tree or uh, moving ball players you can actually pre-focus and actually a lot of people uh, have a 300 millimeter like this which i'm actually going to show you in the next video um or this 400 millimeter and you just pre-focus and uh, you'll actually stick your uh, camera on continuous high and you'll grab the shot uh, pre-focusing is super super easy you don't even have to have you know, uh, Superman skills at all and manually focus to be able to pre-focus for like cars coming around the track or uh, ball players. I mean, you, you just don't. I mean, you, you'll grab the shot, you pre-focus, stick in continuous high and drop off a five round burst. You'll get the shot. You, you really will. And uh, you know, that's a look. That shouldn't be a trick, but I mean, most people will never think about that. But uh, this is an incredible lens. And what can I do with this lens? You know, I can do basically 85% uh, with this lens that I could if I had an autofocus version for a lot less money and also by the way the build quality on this is absolutely supreme this is the absolute pinnacle of Nikon build quality even though those uh, modern uh, super expensive 400mm uh, 2.8 300mm 2.8 and 500mm uh, f4s and whatnot are you know insanely expensive and they are made good you know, ain't nothing made like this, baby. This is this is this is the pinnacle of when Nikon was churning out the really really good shit. Um, I can cover events or concerts or uh, stage actors or uh, sporting stuff. I mean, in sports, not everything is moving all the time. I mean, it's I mean, basketball players are moving, football players are moving, but I mean, they're always constantly stopped as well. I mean, and you can pre-focus and actually catch the action as they're coming into frame. Is that difficult? Is that what you want the autofocus for? Well, certainly it is. But I'm not really, uh, you know, uh, a side of the football track sort of guy. And I'm not uh, not into basketball, and I don't uh, shoot. I used to shoot for the local uh, hair leader uh, uh, newspaper ages ago. I even did uh, some uh, photos that were in uh, their magazine. Well, that was last year. But I mean, I'm not, uh, you know, I'm not a, I'm not doing uh, action photojournalistic work. So for everything else, this manual focus, and it is so silky smooth and easy autofocus. It's like for sports, general sports, stage acting, all nature, ex all nature photography, except for birds on the wing, obviously, you know, birds in flight. You're not going to be doing that with this manual focus lens. But I mean, you're talking about bird in a tree. You can't manually focus a bird in a tree. You got an issue. So it's good for that, too. Um, also... Now you're going to think I'm crazy, but this is the case in any professional that has a lens like this. Actually, mostly it's the 300mm 2.8, which I'm going to show you in the next video. We'll tell you that this is actually amazing for portraiture. It's like, well, why the hell do you have to get back that far, you know, with a lens like this? I don't see anybody at weddings using this. There's a special effect that you can actually get out of this lens. You can bring up test shots of the 300-2.8 or 400-2.8. The uh, spe uh, specific uh, compositional quality that you get out of this compression. I don't know if you know what compression is. 
You ever see some of their shots where it looks like the moon is almost sitting on the person's shoulder and it looks like about four times larger than normal? Like well, it was taken with a lens like this. Okay, not necessarily this specific lens, but a long ass tele lens. You're talking about compressional, compositional quality that people love that. I mean, it, it gives you, and you're really, really, really able to isolate the shot uh, incredibly well with this that you can't even do with a, a 70 to 200. 2.8 you can to a certain degree but the uh, the isolation and uh, the uh, the creamy uh, background and uh, the bokeh off of this lens is uh, phenomenal so this actually is something that someone does use and it is used for portraiture I mean it, is it is it any fun to use this for portraiture no it's not but it does give you a special effect that nothing else will and that's an undeniable damn fact um, See, so yeah, I mean, other than shooting rabid squirrels or ball players that are ditzing around, I mean, everything else is fine. You know, events, concerts, action, all nature except for birds on the wing. And uh, you can pre-focus and shoot stuff like this on the, you know, uh, shooting. Uh, not that you would ever catch me in a NASCAR event, but you know, stuff like that. I mean, you you can do this easily with this lens. I mean, it is not hard at all, even if you don't have any manually focused skill, manual focus skills. Um, um, other features on this lens, if anything, yeah, we have a focus stop back here. You're actually able to adjust it, so it'll bring you back to the same stop point as you were before. I actually don't like that and don't use it. Some people love it. Um, like if you have a known distance of actors, if you focus out of that, you can come back and you can actually feel the stop. Um, I don't need that. I find no use for that at all. Um, at f3.5, this is a damn fast lens. I mean, it is only currently today that we think that... Well, 3.5 isn't that fast. Well, it is a fast lens. Uh, and uh, 400 millimeters f3.5, that's that's a lot. And this lens, like I said, is a hair over 6 pounds. But, you know, I can turn this easily into a 560 millimeter f4.5 lens with my uh, TC14B uh, teleconverter. And I'll show you that in a few days. So, um, how sharp is this lens? It's not sharp at all. It is damn sharp. Um, it actually uh, beats um, the current $12,000 400mm f2.8, which is just obnoxiously expensive and, and insanely huge. I don't know if you know how huge that lens is, but it makes this lens look kind of small by comparison. So anyway, that is the secret. This is the first and only video out there on this lens. There is no other because I went looking for it before I made this video. And, uh, you know, I call it a must-own lens in a sense that most people think, well, I can't, I really want a fast, long tele lens, but I can't afford that $10,000 shit stuff. Um, but you don't, you don't need to. Unless you're going to be shooting, you know, moving ball players and rabid squirrels ditzing around a tree, you don't need it. You can get it with this. You really can. And it is a joy and uh, very easy uh, to... Uh, to manually focus this lens and uh, extremely well made. Nikon has not made anything of this quality and caliber. You know, this lens is almost as old as me. It's nearing 40 years now. Uh, well, 38, 36 years. This lens is 37 years old. But uh, anyway, so that's it. That's the 400 millimeter. Let me uh, retract the lens hood here, which is stuck right now. Here we go. 400 millimeter f 3.5. With built-in lens hood, lens stop, tripod, monopod collar, and uh, this is an AI lens. Thanks for watching. Yes, this lens is incredibly sharp. And the fact that you can get something like that for under $1,000 would amaze most people. Thanks for watching. Catch you later. Bye.